today we're going to be looking at more statistics. We're going to distinguish between what we call parameters and statistics. Today's lesson, the kids were introduced to the idea of finding out information from an original population using samples from that population. So they had to, um, first of all, tell the difference between what a parameter was and a statistic, and then work with a statistic to find more information about the parameter. So we're going to be looking at the standard deviation of the samples and the mean of the samples and comparing them to the true population to see if we can figure out exactly how they behave uh, in their natural form. 167. 167. 167. Again. Again. 148. 168. 168. We're now going to draw an equivalent histogram with the sample means. So it's a different set of numbers this time. It's the sample means, not the original data. Rory, do you want to do your sample there? Um, 163, add one. Yep. Um, 165, we had three. Okay. Uh, 167, we had one. Yep. Uh, 168, we had two. Yep. 169, we had one. Yep. Um, one seven one. We had one. Okay. Now I want you to draw the histogram. You have your frequency table there now. Draw the histogram on the next page, and we're going to compare it to the histogram of the original population, which is on top of that page. Five is one. Well, from a sample of size five, what can we conclude, Brian? What can we conclude? It's not a spread. The smaller spread, yeah. What, what was similar to both? <coughs> the mean. The mean was very similar. To summarise that part of the class, the means were very uh, similar, but the standard deviation was much smaller. In today's lesson, we learned about finding the sample mean from the sample size that we were using and um, how the mean stayed the same throughout the different sample sizes and how the standard deviation got smaller each time. Now we're going to look at what happens if we make our sample size bigger, maybe size 20. But to do that, it would take a long time. So we're going to use some software called Autograph to do that. And we're going to work now on our computers to see what would happen to a distribution if the sample was increased to a sample of size 20. <laughs> Autograph is free software you can download off the internet. And basically what you can do is you can plot graphs, plot points. It will give you all the statistics you need on it, like standard deviation, mode. And it just basically takes the middleman out of maths. Like you don't have to do any calculator work yourself. It will just plot it automatically. So it does save a lot of time. And if you get the hang of it, you'll be flying with it. Like. So we just have to get a sample of 100. Let's try and get a sample of 5. Is that any different than the one we did before? Yeah, it's, uh, it's smaller. Um, what do you think? We have a rectangular distribution. So we'll find the sample means of this one. On our computer, we used a rectangular distribution, different to the rest of the class. And we found that even though it was a different distribution, the means always stay the same. I found using the computers was really good, as in it's just a change from the normal writing in a classroom, and it's more interesting to use the technology as well, so keeps everyone interested. From comparing the different sample sizes, as the sample size gets bigger, we can see the standard deviation gets smaller. The sample size here is 100, so the spread is fairly big. Went down to what was the standard deviation in the first graph too? 1.96. And in the second of the samples, graph 3, what was the standard deviation? Is that a huge difference? No. There's a slight change maybe, but not a huge difference. Not, not something that we'd want to be too worried about. It's roughly 1.9 something in all three. So did the fact that the samples went from 100 to 1,000 make much of a difference? No. So if we, were, if we were statisticians and we wanted to go out and measure a population, would it be necessary to go out and take 1,000 samples, do you think? No. 
Wasn't 100 samples just as effective? We nearly have the same statistics from it. If you want to go and survey a population, you don't have to do every person in the population. You can just pick a group of 100 and you'll get the same results as if you did go to the entire population, which I think is very interesting. I think there, there's nothing puts them outside their comfort zone anymore. I think no matter what I throw at them, they're willing to have a go now. Whereas before, no matter what was new, it was very uncomfortable for them. It took them a while to get used to it. Whereas now they know to expect anything, and I think they're very open to that. And it, because they're more comfortable with it, they pick it up a lot faster. And they're learning a lot faster because there's a lot more wider scope in what you can do with them when you're using the various mediums that are available.